Okay. I think we can get going. Uh, can y'all hear me way over there? <laughs> How about over there? All right. Uh, we're quite spread out. As soon as uh, hopefully we can come together as we go through this process a little closer. Um, okay. I want to just call it to order, and then we'll. Uh, so we're called to order, and it is. Uh, 102, and at this time, uh, Ann will call the roll. Mr. Williams, this oh. is Ca Carolyn Shellman. I'm down here the other end, and I'm right here. Yeah. So I'm, I'm going to call the roll, and I'm okay. going to start <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> with the chair and vice chair, then I'll do the physically present members, and then I'll do the virtual members just to make sure we don't miss anybody. So, okay. Reed Williams, you are present, correct? I am. And our vice chair, Eloisa Portillo Morales, you are here. I am here. Thank you. And the members of the committee who are physically present, John Agatha, here. Seymour Battle, here. Peter Onofre, here. Al Alvaro Rodriguez, here. Michael Kinnick, Present. Jack Hebden, here. Wayne Eddington, Present. Anthony Edwards, um, Norman Dugas, Dana McGinnis, Jim Berg, Anita Ledbetter. And did I understand that Michael Sanchez is virtual? Are you here? I'm here. Here. Okay. And the other virtual members, Didi Belmaris. I'm here. Andy Castillo. Here. Anne Marie Nikolic. Present. Curtis Anastasio. Present. And Dr. Osadelli. Present. Everyone is present, sir. Okay, thank you. Uh, we will now have the uh, safety message. Hello, good afternoon. I'd like to go ahead and cover the safety message and evacuation route in the event that we have an emergency. I just wanted to make sure uh, we are at 500 McCullough. Everybody knows that. And we I wanted to make sure that we, in the event that something does happen, we can exit out these doors off to the side, the glass doors, and that way we go straight to the front parking lot. That would be our first assembly area uh, in the event of a fire or uh, evacuation request. In the event that the, the alarm goes off, uh, there will be followed instructions on the, off the PA to tell us where they want us to go and or why we are evacuating. Um, and again, the first primary location is over here off to my left. Um, I'd like to go ahead and just also touch on uh, with uh, Governor Greg Abbott's uh, recent executive order. The masks continue to be encouraged but are no longer required for our employees, contractors, visitors, and our, uh, within our facilities. Uh, but we want to make sure that we're practicing physical distancing and, and social distancing, whichever you prefer to call it. So uh, it is important that we continue and uh, keeping each other safe and all. Um, this is uh, my conclusion of the safety message. Um, so again, in the event that we need something, uh, uh, we, can, we can ask. Um, we have several people in security around us and also myself as a safety guy that are trained in CPR in the event that we need that. So whatever the emergency might re end up being, we are, we are very confident that we can go ahead and uh, address it. All right? Thank you very much for having me out. Have a wonderful and safe day. Thank you, Mr. Wilburn. Uh, now I'll we'll have uh, Chad Hoopengarner with invocation. Thank you. Good afternoon. Please join me in a brief prayer. Heavenly Father, we come before you today to give you honor and praise. Thank you for the gifts that you've given us, and we thank you for the opportunity to gather today. We ask for your blessing for this meeting of the CPS Energy Rate Advisory Committee. We ask that you guide and direct our discussion so that it is full of wisdom and productivity and mutual respect. Thank you for helping us to accomplish our goals today. Amen. Uh, please join me for the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, 
one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Huben Gardner. Uh, at this time, I have uh, the pleasure of uh, turning it over to the vice chair of uh, CPS. And uh, at this time, uh, uh, Ms. Jenny Gonzalez will make some comments. She'll be followed with comments by uh, the CEO and president, Paula Go Williams, and then our mayor, Ron Nern. Paula? What? I thought we had an order. Oh, I'm just reading the order I'm giving well, I, you. <laughs> I wasn't ready. I'm the, back, I'm the C student that was always ready at the last minute. I'm proud of that. <laughs> I Sorry. did graduate. I, I didn't care. I got out of school. But welcome, everybody. Um, my name is Janie Gonzalez. I'm the vice chair of a CPS Energy Company. I'm really excited to be here today for, for many reasons. First of all, I'm tired of being at home, stuck with my husband for, because of COVID. And so it's really good to start seeing people in, you know, in person. But mo most importantly, in all seriousness, um, I'm the newest board member to CPS. And just to kind of give you some back history, um, I am the first female to ever be elected in that, not elected, but to be confirmed in that district. And so I take a lot of pride in that when you're the first. When you're oftentimes you're the first in a lot of things, um, there's a lot of expectations. And RAC is no different. All of you who are here today, there's a lot of expectations in how you will contribute to the success of what we're trying to accomplish. And that's not going to be easy. And so there's a couple of things that have always kept me humble or have always kept me good at what I do. And that is one, I'm not afraid to surround myself with people who are smarter than me. Two, I'm not afraid to surround myself with people who don't agree with me. And three, I like to surround myself with people who have diversity in thought. I really don't think that we can make change or improve it, you name it. We only got three applications from that district for this. So it's an example of how you're going to represent an area that often isn't engaged. We have extremes here. Often the individuals who are engaged are not from neighborhoods that can relate. And so again, I go back to as you participate with the great leadership that you have with Reed Williams and Eloisa, our mayor, and our great CEO, Paula Go Williams, that you understand that this at the end of the day, you're representing a very diverse group. We have big needs, and I have high expectations of all of you who are representing RAC today. On that note, thank you very much. I'm looking forward to working with all of you. Thank you, Ms. Gonzalez. Now we'll have our CEO and President, Paula Go Williams. Good afternoon. Um, I am like our vice chair of our board. We miss you. <laughs> we miss seeing you. Uh, CPS Energy has served this community for 161 years. And uh, we are passionate about what we do. It seems like it's been a long time for us to create the rack, but I think we are very, mu very much looking forward to what you're doing. This is going to be a hard committee, but I want you to know that you will be well supported by the team here. We know that we need input. We know, as our vice chair says, there are diverse thoughts across our community. And we really believe, as we looked at the membership that were picked by the council and the board, that we will be able to get a tremendous amount of deep and broad thought about the ways that we can go about making things better. In reality, we haven't changed our pricing structure in decades. It is traditional. Um, we can explain it. It's got a lot of components and complexity, but I think that means it's just ripe for improvement and it's ripe for additional consideration and imbalance. So um, I want to thank our chair and our vice chair. They have a tough job. A 21 member board is a big board or big, a big committee to work with. But I very much know that they have the support of the entire board, including the mayor. So with that, I will turn it over to the mayor. Thank you, Paul. Uh, Ron Nuremberg, our mayor. Welcome, everybody. Good afternoon. Um, first, I want to thank Femi, who is tuned in all the way from Nigeria. 
Um, thank you, uh, Femi, for your commitment to this process. Uh, it's very good to see everybody here today um, to celebrate what I consider, and I think our community considers, a key milestone in CPS's history. Uh, as you've heard before and probably been reading about, it took a collaborative effort to get to this point uh, and to get RAC uh, started in this room today. Uh, and I want to thank each and every one of you for volunteering in this capacity. You're going to hear uh, expectations laid out uh, for you about uh, how this RAC is going to operate. It took great thought from your leaders here, the vice chair and the chair. Uh, and so there's a lot on your shoulders. Uh, the community uh, is going to be looking to you to keep them along uh, as this process unfolds uh, to represent their perspectives. And as you heard, uh, sometimes we don't hear their perspectives uh, quite often at City Hall. Uh, this is not a light responsibility, uh, but given your willingness to join the RAC, I know that you are up to the task. Uh, as you will hear uh, probably over and over again, rates and resource planning are major components to CPS's day-to-day -day activities and business. They are and have always been uh, impactful to the communities that we serve and on every resident in this city. And so I want to tell you that as mayor, I'm going to be keeping up with your conversations because as we make those decisions either at the board uh, table of CPS or in City Hall, your input and guidance uh, in these decisions is incredibly important and valuable to me and my colleagues. Um, I have uh, great admiration uh, for the people who are around this table today, in particular our Chair Reed Williams and our Vice Chair Eloisa Portillo Morales. Uh, they have been working very hard over the last several weeks uh, to get ready for today, uh, and I think you're going to see their work in action today. Uh, so thank you, Reed. Thank you, Eloisa, to your, uh, for your commitment to this process. I want to thank also uh, CPS. They are going to be major resources. Uh, the staff will be uh, to this process to make sure it's successful. Uh, and so thank you, Paula, uh, for your commitment to this, as well as your staff uh, who are here today. Um, Again, it took us a while to get here today, uh, but I want to emphasize that your, your, your work is both urgent uh, and it's timely. Uh, so again, thank you for your commitment to this process. Our community is very much looking forward to your work. Thank you. Thank you, Mayor. Uh, now we're going to go around and, and have some introductions. Uh, a couple of things on the introductions. Uh, you, you've each found, uh, perhaps at your table, uh, three questions. We, we've, the work that's been put into selecting the, uh, the individuals on this uh, committee has been extensive. Uh, everybody here has a great uh, experience background, educational background, and uh, have already demonstrated themselves so many ways that, uh, uh, you know, you can certainly uh, know that everybody's got it. So if we can Focus on particularly what you uh, believe motivated you to come to this uh, activity. And then uh, talk a little bit about your training and experience because as the mayor mentioned and as our vice chair mentioned, uh, we need diversity. Without diversity, you don't come up with a valid uh, answer. It gets invalidated because it just wasn't looked at from enough directions. So training and experience uh, is the reason a lot of you are here, and I think it's important that each person understands what brought people here and why they are here with their experience. Finally, we have a lot of expectations. Anytime one of these things starts, and I call it these things because some people have got one idea about it, other people have other ideas. So. Uh, it's going to be very important for myself and, and Eloisa to understand uh, what, a, what you expect out of this because expectations are very powerful. And if we don't understand expectations, uh, we can't respond. On the self-introductions, uh, just give your name. And I would also ask you at some point in time um, to look, and we will get you these, to the appendix on how we, we are proposing uh, that the procedures and conduct of the meeting. Now, uh, in that process, you'll read that 
we, we want to use first names. Everybody's important here. Everybody, most people have a lot more title and, and degrees than I do, but it's, it's, I think it's important to, to use first names. If somebody's offended by that, just let us know and, and we'll make a correction. Uh, I, I change more times than I go forward. So just let us know, but we would prefer that people use first names. Uh, also, in, in respect for some people, uh, please provide us your pronouns. And I learned to do that recently, and I can do it. So uh, I know you can, okay? And so let me start out. Uh, my name is Reed Williams, and my pronouns are he and him. Uh, I um, am motivated to join this RAC because of the experience I had when I first joined city council. Uh, we had a very difficult situation with an investment. We were able to come out of it. And uh, since then, I've been extremely interested in, in CPS because I believe as CPS goes, so goes the city. It is the single number one uh, funding source for our general fund, and it is the lifeline for many of our citizens. So we've got to, we've got to protect CPS, we've got to make it work, and we've got to make it work for everyone. My background is in the oil and gas industry, primarily in the refining industry. I started in right out of school and out of the military like 73, 74, and I started in what then was called logistics, pushing trucks, building pipelines. Today it's called midstream. And uh, so from the very beginning, uh, in those days, even our trucks were regulated economically. Obviously our pipelines were. So I started working with rates uh, quite a while ago, and all the way through my career, I continued to work with rates because most of the products lines we had and some of the crude lines were, were FERC regulated lines and they stayed regulated. As far as the accomplishments here, it, to me it's very simple. We keep uh, CPS very strong financially, we satisfy the needs of our community, and we adjust to change because change is coming pretty rapidly. And we're going to have to accept that change and find ways to deal with it. And after that, I will now pass it uh, to my vice chair, Eloisa, please. Hi, everybody. Um, I am Eloisa Portillo Morales. Um, my pronouns are she, her, hers. And um, what motivated me to participate in the Rate Advisory Committee um, has a lot to do not just with the work that I've done over uh, my career, but uh, my personal upbringing and experience. Um, I am a first generation American, uh, grew up in a very low income household, um, and dealt with a lot of issues around um, not having those resources. So disconnections and going to the mission and the food line was really part of my normal existence uh, growing up. And so I've always found that in working in different, um, different areas in the government, local, state, and along with some federal work, um, I always felt that there wasn't a lot of people that shared my experience, um, but a lot of people that made a lot of decisions that would impact people just like me and my family and many others that shared those experiences. And so I really thought hard about this and, um, and I felt that it was, this was the time. Uh, it wasn't, it is not just about uh, making sure uh, that we are moving forward in a way that is um, good for CPS and good for uh, the city, but it is good for our community. Um, and so when I, Think about that I know that this is a moment where all of you are, we are all coming together because we know that there's something better that can happen. And so as um, Paula just said, um, this is a moment that's ripe for improvement. And so my training and experience that I bring, um, I have a, a bachelor's in mechanical engineering and I have a master's in business. Um, I've worked with uh, the city of El Paso and the city of San Antonio for uh, well over a decade. Um, 
and I currently now work for uh, International Environmental Organization and I work with uh, 25 of the largest cities in the U.S. Um, to implement progressive um, and um, progressive climate action and greenhouse gas reductions. But not just doing that, but doing that in a way that doesn't burden those communities that have been burdened um, historically. And so what I expect that we can accomplish in this committee is that we will be um, provide some recommendations that are thoughtful, that are data-driven, uh, that are transparent, um, and that we are not just thinking about um, the bottom dollar, but we are also thinking about how any decisions that we are making or we proposing impact the different sectors of this community, uh, businesses, and individuals um, that are on limited uh, resources. So I am really excited to be here and excited to be with all of you. And with that, I am going to turn it over to. At this point, I think uh, the roll is going to be called by Ann. That's right. And we'll start around for introductions. Is that correct, Ann? And she's got the microphone that she'll bring around to you. Thank you very much. That is correct. Uh, my name is John Agather. Um, I was born and raised and educated in Mexico. I have to say I froze in fear a little bit because English is actually my second language. So when you're asking what the pronouns are, I'm like, I don't even know what a pronoun is. Uh, uh, but uh, what motivated me to serve on uh, the RAC is uh, I'm a former chairman of the San Antonio Hispanic Chamber of Commerce. Uh, during my tenure as the chair there, uh, we dealt with some issues with CPS. I got very interested in what was happening to CPS because it really is the heart of this community. Uh, CPS uh, touches and affects every single person in San Antonio and outlying communities, so uh, it was something that I was very engaged with. Um, in terms of what my experience and training uh, bring to the RAC, um, I've been involved in very large businesses and small businesses. I'm now a retired businessman, uh, so I bring a lot of business experience to it, but also a lot of community experience. I have a long uh, history of being involved with uh, different issues in San Antonio. 30 years ago, I was the founding chairman of Free Trade Alliance San Antonio when we were uh, trying to negotiate NAFTA. Uh, there's a reason why I was signed in San Antonio. Um, and then more recently, apart from the Hispanic Chamber, I'm also uh, recently retired as the chairman of the board of the Reno Air Races, which is the fastest motorsport in the world. Uh, and in terms of what I expect and accomplishments here, I hope we find a good solution for going forward, not, not only in terms of uh, talking about rates and how that affects every member of our community, but also uh, what energy platforms are we looking uh, to uh, engage in for the future so that we have a guaranteed uh, source of energy for our community. Uh, good afternoon, everyone. My name is Seymour Battle. Uh, what motivated me to participate in RAC was really the realization of how few people fully had a grasp and understanding of uh, how energy was delivered to our community, what went into those, those factors, and really realizing that that disparity in, ed in, in education about the process was centralized around places that were most impacted when, these, when, when rates and things changed. So really that was my motivation for, for getting involved with the RAC, really for, for educational purposes. Uh, my training, I bring 25 years experience in the en energy industry, uh, facing similar challenges with, with balance and regulation, reliability, profitability, and, a lot, and external factors that, that impact the final price of your product that a customer pays. And some of those that are outside of your outside of your, uh, a lot of those being outside of your, your, your purview uh, with delivering those. So really that, that experience in the industry, energy industry dealing with those. And um, the accomplishments, accomplishments I hope to expect from, from the RAC is really just that we come out with a better, obviously a more educated RAC committee, but also a community. Um, actionable plan for future rate adjustments within our community where people really understand what's happening, the impacts and, and the timing of those 
and making sure that they are fair and equitable to, to both solutions that are there for both businesses as well as residents. So, thank you. Thank you. Good afternoon. My name is Peter Onofre. And uh, my motivation for uh, submitting an application to become a part of the RAC was similar to Seymour coming from the southwest part of San Antonio where there's uh, many times a disconnect with the, the underserved community and being in ministry for 25 years and uh, I think it's the ultimate people business and uh, CPS being people first mantra I thought it would be a good connect for me uh, because of ministry and I spent 20 years in the city also so I'm serving the our city through that process and the motivation that I saw when just recently uh, I was w closing out, or we're closing out the uh, SA Tomorrow uh, Port San Antonio uh, community plan, and it's been two years and we're closing it out now, and I saw the value of being engaged in the community, and we're making plans for the next 20 years for people that don't have a clue what's gonna happen, they're trying to live day to day, and being able to bring them to the table and to connect with them, or if you don't get them to the table, you reach out and educate them. That was my motivation, is to better understand where CPS is going because it's so dynamic. And before, I applied before the, the, storm, the, the storm URI. So when that happened, of course, now things have ramped up to a whole nother level, but it still doesn't change the, the process by which we engage with people. And I've been inspired by my Councilwoman, Councilwoman Rocha, Rocha Garcia, and also by our mayor and our city council, because one thing that I've seen in them that has motivated me to be a part of this is how they've made community engagement such a priority. And CPS, and I've dug into the documents and how we're moving in that direction and getting to where we are today with with the, the rack is so important because it is that next step and I'm just, I'm excited about being able to be a part of it. Uh, as far as my background, as I said, in, in ministry, I've been involved in numerous community initiatives in my 20 years in ministry. And one that I think that would bring value is um, we launched a children's home and in the process of launching a children's home, I partnered with a collaborative, a child abuse collaborative here in San Antonio and we incorporated a results-based accountability model. And in that model, uh, working much like in this, in this type of a setting where you have a very diverse group of, of agencies, some government, some nonprofit, and community members that are striving to, to, to address child abuse in that case. And I saw the value in being able to start with that results statement. That's, that's what set the course for that group to be able to work together. We created a, a data-driven decision-making process, but I think the most important thing that we did that I think will be valuable that I, I encourage us and I'll continue to be a, an advocate for is to find that common ground, that goal that we say this is what we want and we're gonna hear it today from numerous people and it's being able to come to a place of, we may disagree on how we're gonna get there, but knowing that this is our result statement and we want or goal or common ground that we can always come back to that. And uh, I agree with the, the vice chair about being open to other opinions and being able to talk through it and for the, the greater good. And I, I think the accomplishment for me is very specific back to the communities that we serve is that they walk away from this experience with us knowing that they have confidence in the process that we, we undertook to make the decisions for this rate increase or, or not rate increase. Thank you. My name is Alvaro Rodriguez. I'm known as Al Rodriguez, and my pronouns are he and him. I come to you after being appointed to this uh, committee through my Council person Melissa from District 6. I am a past member of the CPS CAC, which is the uh, Citizens Advisory Committee. I served two three year terms there, and I was part of the leadership committee uh, for that group. I am self employed. I've been self employed for 35 years. I specialize in electrical surge protection, lightning protection. Uh, harmonic mitigation, UPS, 
un uninterruptible power supply systems, as well as um, the whole gamut of electrical equipment and supplies that I serve to major contractors. The goal for me, personal goal, is to um, get this committee to come to a conclusion as far as guaranteeing to the community reliable and reasonably priced gas and electric. And currently we're one of the lowest priced utilities. I'd like to keep it that way. And currently we're also one of the uh, more globally recognized utility companies that others come to see how we did what we do. And they, they try to learn from that as well. So if we can keep that, all that going, that'd be great. Uh, another personal goal is that at the end of this, or even during the process, when my councilman asked me to escort her or to join her at other uh, HOA meetings, that I'm able to communicate what this committee is doing currently and what our goals are. So I will be hopefully keeping her uh, informed on our progress and hopefully I'll be able to also inform the immediate, the immediate community that we serve. Thank you. Good afternoon, everyone. My name is Michael Kenick. Uh, my pronouns are he and him. Uh, what motivated me to join? So I think like most people on this committee, we all have a, a background of volunteerism. So in my case, uh, you know, most of my adult life I've volunteered, but mostly in things like youth activities, uh, volunteered with Boy Scouts of America for eight years. Last 10 years I've been a volunteer run coach with uh, San Antonio Roadrunners. But when I saw the uh, advertisement for this committee back in, I think it was last November, I finally saw for myself an opportunity to give back to my community using my, uh, my professional background and, and my professional education. Um, so that's, you know, personally, that's what I'm hoping to, to do here. Um, what do I bring to the committee? Uh, again, my background is, uh, since I've moved here, I've been, last 24 years, an electrical engineer for the U.S. Air Force, uh, mostly working uh, IT systems and currently working as a, uh, enterprise architect for Air Force business systems and as a, and as a software engineer. Uh, but prior to that, I spent eight years in the electric utility industry um, uh, working for, for <laughs> the, actually the, the largest municipal electric utility in the United States. <laughs> I know we tout being the largest municipal and gas utility. I worked for the, for the LA Department of Water and Power early in my, my career. Uh, also, uh, academically, what I bring is I have a, a bachelor's degree in electrical engineering, and then I also have my master's degree in electrical engineering with an emphasis in electric utility power systems. Um, also from USC, I earned a master's in public administration with an em emphasis in public finance. So I, hopefully I have the, the right combination of uh, professional experience and academic background to, to help this committee. Um, as far as what I expect, as far as the accomplishments here, um, I think what a lot of people have hit upon is, is that whole idea of diversity. Um, you know, we need to remember that we are strictly an advisory committee, but as an advisory committee, I'm, I'm hoping that we're bringing a, a, a vast diversity of perspectives from the community, um, you know, from residential community, from you know, citizens, and, and from the business community, and that we can together uh, look at our rate structures and, and come up with new ideas and, and move this uh, this utility forward and, and keep us financially strong. Uh, I guess the only other little thing I'd add about myself and my, my background because of what I've done is is I'm a, a very strong advocate of public utilities, of public power. Um, I, I don't think it would come up in this committee, but if, if when people I hear suggest you know, selling things like CPS off to the public sector, I'm so much against that. Again, I'm an advocate for the, uh, the strength of public power and, and the things that it brings our city, not only financially, but being able to bring in that diversity uh, of needs to back and giving it back to our city and not just 
creating a utility for corporate profit. So definitely a, an advocate for, for, for public utilities, for public power. Hi, I'm, I'm Jack Hebden, and what motivated me to participate is I've been volunteering my whole adult career, uh, particularly around San Antonio and different causes. Uh, real involved with Fiesta, former King Antonio and President Fiesta, so I feel like I've got a lot of experience of working around the city. Um, I also currently serve uh, on a board of 35 people from around the country as advisors to the Secretary of the Air Force and the Chief of the Air Force and now Chief of Space Operations. I had a chance to work with Paula Gold and Williams and, and CPS and Joint Base San Antonio on an issue that I, I think we resolved. Um, but anyway, so that's that's what got me into it. Uh, training and experience, I'm a CPA by education and a finance major and had the opportunity to uh, do a lot of real estate development in all sectors of the real estate industry and have um, participated in probably over $6 billion of, of financial transactions, both individual assets and uh, operating companies. Um, so I, I like to help bring that experience to the table wherever I can around San Antonio, and I do, a, I do a lot with a lot of nonprofits in town. And what accomplishments do I expect? I just, I came to this hoping that I could, I could learn a lot about uh, CPS and how rates are set, and to be able to work together with this group to, to come up with solutions that are good for all of San Antonio. So, thank you. <coughs> Uh, my name is Wayne Eddington. I uh, grew up here in San Antonio. I went to Sam Houston way, when they, way back when they were called Cherokees. I uh, left there, went to Texas A&M, um, have a uh, under, under, <laughs> undergrad civil engineer, and I also picked up my uh, Air Force commission while I was there. Uh, while serving in the military, I traveled the world, both duty-wise and non-duty. I'm still traveling all over the place. I uh, obtained a master's degree in public administration while doing that. and. Um, I don't have any, my only motivation is just to serve. Uh, I don't have any preconceived ideas on anything one way or the other. I think I'm pretty good at problem solving and so uh, I'm just here to serve however I can. Um, and once again, I don't have any, any expectations as far as what the group will or will not do. Let's see where the group goes, let's be open-minded, uh, no hidden agenda so that we can get to a good product and do what we need to do. My name is Anthony Edwards, and uh, what motivated me to become a part of this committee is that uh, about 41 years ago, I began my journey here at CPS Energy, and I was a rate and regulatory analyst. And I retired 14 years ago as vice president of community programs. And uh, let me just tell you that what really motivated me to be a part of this was the fact that uh, being retired, I, I need to also say this too. This is the second time I've worn a suit in like 14 months, so uh, <laughs> I felt a little bit uncomfortable here. Uh, usually have a t-shirt and jeans. But when I first began my journey at CPS Energy, uh, I was a rate and regulatory analyst, and I did a lot of work with uh, an entity called PURPA, Public Utility Regulatory Policy Act, and we had a lot of civic involvement and community in, uh, involvement into the rate-making standards and things. So that, that really, uh, when I heard about this committee, I thought, well, I have those sort of experiences. So uh, coupled with having worked for CPS and being blessed with uh, having leaders that allow uh, community investment to be the hallmark of what the company was about, we established programs like uh, the SAFE program, Student Assistance for Education. We did, we did programs, weatherization, and uh, one that I actually, actually I'm going to take credit for that, started was the, uh, the Re Residential Energy Assistance Partnership. And, uh, and that was really designed to allow uh, folks who had problems paying their bills that there were monies available for, for indigent and, and customers in need. Uh, I have an undergraduate degree from the University of the Incarnate Word and a graduate degree in environmental management from the University of Texas here in San Antonio. Now, what I um, 
my, my sense is that I, I wanted to be a part of this, and my, my expectations are uh, to, to help be a part of meaningful solutions that will help CPS Energy optimize its relationships with all segments of the customer, ba customer base with a full understanding of fairness, inclusion, and input regarding rate development. Hello, my name is Norman Dugas. Um, I am grew up here in San Antonio, Jefferson High School. Uh, we never could beat Sam Houston. Uh, and went on to uh, SMU undergrad, uh, the University of Texas for law school. Uh, I've been a uh, residential uh, real estate developer here in San Antonio. I practiced real estate law for 15 years and since 93 was a residential uh, real estate developer. Um, what motivated me to participate, uh, actually I was drafted. Uh, I had spent about the last 15 years representing the real estate industry working with CPS Energy on infrastructure improvements, subdivision development, and all the issues that are involved in the, in the expansion of service to uh, new customers. And having been a um, both residential and commercial customer for CPS Energy from the la for the last 40 years, since 1981, uh, I felt like I brought a little bit of perspective, both in understanding a little bit about the physical nature of the expansion of utilities as well as being a customer on both sides. Uh, from a training and experience standpoint, probably the thing that's most uh, uh, appropriate was I was actually on the SAWS board uh, for five years, from 1995 to 2000. And during that time, we did a complete rate restructure. We restructured the rate system for SAWS at that time. Uh, it's obviously, it's a very different motivation because our emphasis all, always was on conservation uh, at SAWS because of the limited supply of water. And SAWS is a break-even entity as opposed to CPS Energy, which is a, uh, call it a profit-making entity as far as contributing to the City of San Antonio's budget. So there's certainly different aspects of it, but I did learn a little bit about cost and, uh, and, and how you, you account for cost in rates and how you have to look at a lot, lot, lot of issues it's just not a simple question. Uh, I'm fond of saying that, a, that a, a typical round diamond has 58 facets on it. And if you only look at it one facet, it can be perfect. But you have to get all 58 facets working together to come up with a true gemstone. And that's what we're dealing with here is multiple, multiple issues that are involved and we can't just focus on one. Uh, and from accomplishments, what I hope for is at the end of the day, when we've made our recommendations to the board and subsequently to uh, city council, uh, when, when the inevitable rate increase comes, because at some point there will be a rate increase, and nobody's ever happy with a rate increase, but hopefully it, if we've done our job, our accomplishment will be that when people see the new rates and the new structure, they will view it as fair. And I say the majority of people. You're never going to satisfy 100% of folks. But if the vast majority of people look at what we've done and say they did the best they could to make this as fair as possible for the community, then I think we will have accomplished, at least I think we will have accomplished our goal. Hello, my name is Dana McGinnis. Uh, I'm a local businessman, educational background. I got a degree in art and archaeology from Princeton. Of course, that does no good, uh, <laughs> at least on this committee. But my professional degree, uh, my professional business uh, was, was traditionally in the oil and gas business uh, from a, a securities point of view. Started with an energy only firm. Uh, in, the, in, the, in the 80s. Started my own business around 1990, which was really running international funds. And the pertinent experience there is that I've invested in energy and utilities in America, but also in South America, in, uh, in the Philippines, in Eastern Europe and Russia, and 
what I can tell you is that uh, policy matters when you're looking at an investment. And that's all I had to look at, you know, was it going to make money for the shareholders? And so the policy is the thing that really matters and whether or not you make money. Sometimes the company doesn't really have a say on that. So years ago, maybe when uh, Milton Lee, no, is that, is that his name? Milton Lee was, was uh, president of CPS uh, and there was consideration of changing the energy mix and doing a number of other things. I uh, maybe naively thought that maybe I could be of service by explaining policy and what the, the risks and complications were for going through this kind of change. Uh, unfortunately, I don't think I did any good on that, but, uh, and that's why I'm still here. I've been sort of involved for a long time uh, looking at this CPS because it's important to the city and it uh, delivers a third of the city's budget off the top line of CPS. And when CPS is not uh, a, an ongoing profitable concern, which it always has been until recently, then it's, it's a major concern for the city. And that's one of the, one of the things that I want to bring to this committee, talk exactly about that and what we do in policy and some of the policy that CPS has to contend with is, is at the state level, there's nothing we can do about it. And uh, I think CPS is sort of facing this kind of issue right now because of the freeze. That has not been resolved. And there are not a whole lot of things we can, that are really under CPS control at this point. But there's some things that are, and so and I hope that we'll have a chance to discuss all that. Thank you. My name is Jim Berg, and uh, before I just uh, brief you on the answering the questions that Reed has given, um, I came from New York, um, <clears throat> Marine Corps pilot, Vietnam helicopter pilots, out of my mind, of course, and. Um, uh, but I say that at the same time that when I left the Marine Corps, my first job was with a company building offshore drilling rigs uh, that took me from uh, Houston to Brownsville to Scotland. We were the, had a 60% share of the jack-up offshore drilling rig business in the world, and it was a marvelous Texas company, really based in Longview, but part of a large conglomerate. Read in answer to your questions, um, <clears throat> in a word, what brings me is service. Uh, I felt like it's my turn. I'm following in the footsteps of my father, Tom, who was a CPS trustee in the 70s and later its chairman. Uh, this was a most turbulent era for those of us who were here at the time, Coastal States Gathering Company, which was CPS's natural gas supplier and its chairman, Oscar Wyatt, turned off the spigot to natural gas to this city overnight. And his price increase hit every citizen in this community, every citizen and every business. Natural gas increased 12 times from one day to the next. And so it was this era that my father is chairman um, and I, a casual 20-something, maybe almost 30-something observer watched as my father was on the front page of every newspaper every day for what seemed like five years. <clears throat> the price then went from 25 cents a million cubic feet to three dollars, all because of the Arab oil embargo. CPS and the other utilities sued. In the end, my father negotiated with Lila Cockrell's permission a settlement with Wyatt, which resulted in our gas supplier, Coastal States, Coastal Labaca, being spun off and moved from Corpus Christi to San Antonio. And Seymour, this is what I was referring to, 
that's how we got the stock in what became the Valero Energy Company and what also brought Bill Greehy uh, to San Antonio. And what changed San Antonio was that bad event turning into a good event. So I feel like it's my time to get into the breach. Uh, what training experience do you bring to the rack? Well, not much. I mean, other than having been a small business owner, self-employed, in two San Antonio businesses for 42 years, I signed a lot of checks to CPS and plenty of payrolls, and I've lived, I guess you might say, the real world like many of us here. I don't think my Marine Corps Vietnam helicopter piloting experience really prepared me for this rack, but I do know that always all of us need to be in leadership positions because we have to lead our way through this morass that the city has found itself. Finally, what accomplishments do you expect from the rack? Well, I think that we collectively and adequately serve our fellow citizens by listening to them and recommending sensible and reasonable solutions to these issues that face our company. After all, it is our company. Good afternoon, everyone. Uh, my name is Anita Ledbetter, and my pronouns are she and her. Uh, I was really motivated to, uh, and, and I feel very privileged to be a part of this group because I was uh, born and raised here in San Antonio, like some of us. I uh, grew up in the east side and the south side, and although I had a very loving uh, home, I experienced extreme poverty during my teenage years, uh, really to the point where I could no longer attend school. I went years without a refrigerator, uh, without a working stove, you know, no air conditioning, no heat in the winter. I lived many months without power and water on and off for years. This has really shaped my life's work and today fuels me and I believe it's my strength. I know firsthand the impact of energy costs on the lives of people and really to the people of San Antonio, I'm here for you. I went to both St. Phillips College and later Our Lady of the Lake and I have served our community as the executive director of both Solar San Antonio and Build San Antonio Green, our local nonprofits, for the past 17 years. My mission is to improve the lives of the people of San Antonio through our work, and my dream is to bring affordable, accessible, clean power and green building to everyone. Today, we have certified over 27 million square feet of residential, multifamily, and commercial green buildings here in San Antonio, um, saving 19.8 um, megawatts of peak demand and energy and over 300 million pounds of CO2, which is equal to taking about 27,000 cars off the road every year. Uh, currently, we have about 15, 18 million square feet under construction. Uh, I served in both the Mission Verde um, plan, the SA Tomorrow plan, currently serve on our bike share program, um, I've served on the SAW Citizen Advisory Committee, and most recently, I had the honor and privilege of serving as our co-chair of the SA Climate Ready Plan, where I specifically focused on both emission reduction, but mostly around uh, adaptation to climate change and extreme weather events. I also serve currently as our vice chair of our $800 million 2017 bond. What accomplishments would I like to see us, um, uh, what do I expect from the RAC? Really, this committee should work together to provide data-driven feedback within an equity framework that will allow CPS Energy to build a rate structure that addresses extreme weather events through innovation, uh, our climate decarbonization goals, while meeting both our current and future energy needs without leaving anyone behind or causing an undue burden on customers. Success for me would be a rate structure that allows us to basically re-engineer a clean, climate-ready, equitable, resilient, and affordable system for all. Thank you. Thank you. I will now turn it over to Adrian Garcia, who is helping us with our WebEx so that we can introduce those people that are attending virtually today. Adrian, you there? Hi, and yes, ma'am, I am here. Uh, 
Uh, let's go ahead and start with uh, Andy Castillo with District 5. Uh, Andy, please feel free to start your video and unmute yourself. Hello, my name is Andy Castillo. I grew up here in San Antonio. I attended UTSA where I received my undergrad and master's in architecture and studied urban design and historic preservation. After moving to my neighborhood, I got involved with my community and joined the Neighborhood Association where I've been vice president and currently I'm sorry? Can you hear me? Oh. Um, I've been president of my neighborhood. Um, I was motivated to be on the committee because 69% of District 5 housing stock was built prior to 1969, while 31 was built after the 1970s. Uh, this means many of the homes are not energy efficient or in, our, in our community. 62% uh, of those homes are owned by people 55 and older, and the medium income of my community is 28,000. Um, the burden of high electricity prices will impact my community immensely. Uh, I would like to be, I would like to help be a voice for the community when it comes time to give our input and perspective to CPS Energy Management and Board of Trustees for rate structures, rate design, and proposed rate increases when the time comes. I hope my experience in architecture and energy efficient requirements that I deal with at work um, will help during our conversations, as well as the experience I've gained being on the CPS Citizens Advisory Committee for the past six years. Uh, while being part of this committee, I hope we can talk and advise the board on a rate design that will not burden the most vulnerable and be as fair as possible to all those that use CPS Energy. Thank you. Thank you, Andy. Uh, you can go ahead and mute your uh, mute yourself now. Thank you so much. And uh, let's go ahead and to help with bandwidth. Uh, stop the video. Okay, there we go. Thank you. Uh, let's go with Anne-Marie. Anne-Marie, please start your video uh, if you can and also unmute yourself. Thank you. Good afternoon. Um, thank you for helping with all of this, Andy. <laughs> um, I have to say that listening to everybody's uh, experience and their education and their um, goals and aspirations for this group, I'm really humbled and honored to, to be a part of it. So thank you all very much. Um, so my name is Anne-Marie Nikolic, and my pronouns are she and her. And I'm a second generation American, just two generations removed from uh, a village <laughs> in Europe, and also growing up with kerosene lamps and, and hand pumps for water. So. Um, I'm interested in energy and, and water and the utilities that we need. Um, and my motivation is that I believe in these next few years, um, they, the next few years will be a challenge for the traditional and the emerging and energy industries in this country and in the world. And finding a place of balance for the consumer and the customer can't be overlooked. So participation in this committee, I'm hoping, may provide the opportunity to assist in this area. And also, this industry is very intricate, as some folks have already mentioned. And so I would like to learn more about the nuts and bolts and the end stage of these processes. Um, my training is from my parents. They taught me pretty good organizational skills. My exposure to the field of law, I started out as a legal secretary, helped me to apply what I learned from my parents in a very organized manner in just about every field or undertaking that I've had in my life. It also taught me to look for things not easily seen or identified by others um, in situations. So all of this has helped me to successfully navigate federal, state, and local government as a community advocate on various issues. And here in San Antonio, that's been with SAWS, BearMet, um, and CPS, and uh, other little things along the way. Um, I, I never sought anything out. Things just, when I saw that something needed to be addressed, um, I'm the kind of person that, if, don't tell me it can't be done. 
because I'll find a way to do it. Um, I understand that there are experts um, in uh, the areas on this uh, committee will explore, and I've experienced changes that can occur. Um, and sometimes, it, you know, it's just very simple. It can be very simple. Um, sometimes we make things a lot more complicated. So I hope I can keep that simplicity um, in mind. And I expect this work to uphold RAC's mission and vision of affordability, reliability, and sustainability. And I expect this work to be transparent and done with integrity. I hope we can accomplish providing simple communication that educates the community. Um, we may not all agree, but ultimately we should understand the whys so we can listen and respond appropriately to the community and dialogue with, with our neighbors. Thank you. Great. Thank you so much, Anne-Marie. Uh, we'll turn now to Mr. Kurt. Mr. Kurt, please unmute yourself and start your video if you can. Thank you. Oh, Mr. Kurt, I think you're still uh, muted, sir. Okay, can you hear me now? Yes, sir. Thank you. Sir. Okay, good. Hi, I'm Kurt Anastasio, pronouns, pronouns he and him. Um, I, uh, in listening to everybody, I probably should mention I'm, I'm uh, a first person in my family to go to college, a uh, product of Italian immigrants. And I realize in retrospect, I grew up quite poor, but uh, didn't feel that way at the time. Um, I am uh, have a law degree, but I've spent most of my career in business not practicing law, 40-plus uh, years, mainly in energy business, uh, 14 of which was as CEO of New Star Energy, a local uh, San Antonio energy company. Uh, lots of work on all kinds of things, but a lot in logistics, rate setting, pipeline rate setting, project development, project uh, management and execution. Uh, and, and lately uh, involved in, in several private energy transition uh, businesses. Uh, I'm very interested in, in the work of this uh, community, uh, of this committee, because, um, uh, I mean, obviously CPS is a kind of a crown jewel, critical asset. Uh, the con those who know me and know sort of the culture of the companies I've run knows that the concept of all stakeholders, not just having a say, but having to benefit uh, in the decisions we make is a sort of old hat to me. And uh, so I look very much forward uh, to working with my colleagues here on, on finding the best path forward. Wonderful. Thank you so much, Mr. Kurt. Uh, let's go ahead and turn to Ms. Didi Bilmars. Didi, please unmute yourself, and if you can, start your video. Thank you. Hi, everybody. Uh, Didi Belamadis. I'm, I'm sorry I couldn't be there with everybody today. That was uh, initially my, my uh, intention. My son is graduating from high school uh, today, this evening, so we've got a lot of family stuff to take care of right after this meeting. But uh, looking forward to seeing you all at the next one. Um, my motivation is um, I grew up um, in a working class family on the south side of San Antonio. And uh, my dad was a conservationist. Um, we always had to turn off our heating or AC at a, in the evening and um, turned things back on later in the day, depending on what season um, it was. So uh, I carry that with me uh, to this day because I know that we weren't the only family and I know today that there are a lot of families out there. And, that uh, or and businesses that probably think about the same thing uh, to cut to save money. So uh, that's the first reason for my motivation, but also because um, you know we're we're a municipal utility, we're publicly owned, and um, I think this committee is much needed. And um, I think that there is a lot that we can do to um, assist all all ratepayers. I'm a climate justice organize, organizer with a, an organization called Public Citizen. Uh, my work uh, revolves around climate planning, particularly around um, renew renewable energy sources and the impacts that uh, fossil fuels have on our environment and on communities. So my expectations are that we just all committed to um, being open and transparent and um, 
that we listen to each other, but I think there's a lot of different perspectives in this group, um, a lot of experience. And um, so I think that as long as we're open to that, that we'll do right by um, all the rate payers. So thank you. Thank you so much, Didi. Uh, now we'll turn to Femi. Femi, I know we were having some bandwidth issues, so uh, let's go ahead and test your connection now. Okay, I guess you can see me and hear me now, can you? Yes, we can see you and hear you. Uh, Thank you so much. Wonderful. Um, well, it's a pleasure to be on this uh, committee. Um, I, I'll try to keep this very short, so you, at least you hear everything I have to say. Uh, my name is Femi Oshidele. I am a water resources and energy uh, consultants, uh, self-employed, and um, I'll just go straight to my motivation, which is very simply the Climate Action Adaptation uh, and Adaptation Plan. Uh, this was uh, the steering committee on the opportunity to serve, uh, to co-chair with uh, Anita Ledbetter, uh, and uh, this process gave me the first-hand insight into the origins, the values, and the missions of the, of the Iraq as we have it today, especially in the areas of generation planning. And, um, and on the second question of my training and experience uh, that I bring to the RAC, uh, I have an expertise in energy management and environmental policy. I have a strong passion for analysis and analytic uh, systems, uh, particularly using you know, fact and evidence-based decision-making to arrive at solutions that work for, uh, for my clients. And uh, in doing so, I, my approach is really cross-functional and also to apply system thinking so I tend to look at all dimensions uh, as much as I, as possible. Um, on the third question, which is really what accomplish, what what talks about what accomplishments do I expect uh, from the RAC? Um, sorry, I'm having a slow connection here. Here we go. Yeah, I'm I'm really looking for um, effective. Uh, cost recovery for CPS energy, um, looking for near to medium term rate stability, looking for equitable cost allocations to the customer uh, class, to all customer classes, and also a rate structure that um, that is easily communicated to all customers. I think uh, those are things that you know I feel would would really make uh, would be indicators of success uh, to me. And so, in summary, you know, we are embarking on a, a mission that is groundbreaking, that is landmarking, and that is far-reaching. And I think those are some of the things that I'll be using as motivators and also as, as, as a driver for my participation on this committee. I look forward to working with every member, and uh, I think we, we are onto some good things, and I'm looking forward to um, a good time. Thank you. Thank you so much, Dr. Femi. And I'd like to just uh, add that uh, very impressive that you're joining us from Nigeria. And you're able to connect with us today. Uh, thank you. Uh, lastly, we'll turn to uh, Mr. Michael. Mr. Michael, if you can uh, unmute yourself now, and if you can, uh, start your video. Mr. Michael, it says that you're uh, unmuted, but we cannot hear you. It appears we're having some sort of audio connection, um, technical issues with Mr. Michael, and we will uh, resolve those here momentarily. Um, Anne? Okay, thank you. We'll get back. I believe that's Mr. Sanchez, right? Michael Sanchez? Is that who? Yes, okay. We'll get back to him once you can uh, get on. Let's move on in the sake of time here so we can uh, get through this, uh, this next part of the meeting. Um, we need to talk a little bit about uh, process. And uh, uh, Eloisa and I have worked uh, hard on trying to think about how we go about this. So if we could um, get the slides up. And we know that one. <laughs> the next one, please. So for a moment here, we're going to, I'm just not going to talk. We're going to talk, then Alois will have some things to say. And then we want to go through an iteration back and get some questions and try to get into a little bit uh, freer discussion. 
but we'll go through and look at the overall. We need to talk about the conduct of the meeting. This is going to be really important. Uh, we'll review the public input process, and then we'll discuss the phases. I got to move over here. Sorry, this thing has wheels on it. Uh, discuss the phases, and then uh, once you get across, doesn't pick up very well. So. Let's have the next slide, please. Oh, you want me to use this? Okay. Okay, this will, this will, yeah, that works better. I can turn this one on. Perfect. Thanks. Okay, this comes from a good friend of mine, Dr. Isak Azizi. I don't want anybody to think I, I thought of this. I'm not that smart. But we have to understand where we are in this process, okay, and how we fit in. This was a part of the discussion as I followed it over, I don't know, 14 months or more that we were looking at, uh, uh, we were looking at, the board was looking at this with the help of management. And we have to be very clear the the authority in this process is still with the board. There was a lot of discussion that, oh, this is, group's going to try to take over the board. Not a chance, okay? And it's not designed that way. The board is the board, and they will continue to have the authority. The difference in authority and power is authority gives the right to do something, power can actually execute and do it. And that's where uh, uh, Paula Go Williams and her team come in and do a very good job of that. Let's leave that slide up there. Okay, now, we only have influence, but in the long run, having influence is probably one of the most lasting things you can have because we are voters, we are citizens, and we are ratepayers. And we're very, going to, we're going to be here in a large number. If you would please look at those two intersections between authority and power, that's where we will work. Hopefully we'll be able to influence the board. The board will set the agenda for this. They will have things that they need us to do. Problems will come up, we'll talk about that in a minute. Our interface back to them is strictly on an influencing basis. We will be asked questions, we'll do our work, we'll give our opinion, okay? The other intersection is with the, with the is very important. It's with the team that uh, Ms. Paula Gold Williams uh, runs. Hopefully that will be a very productive interface. We have a lot to learn from them, and hopefully in our work we can help them see things too. The fi in the end, let's leave that up there. Okay, well, you don't want to see me on that fact thing. Just leave the slides up there. That intersection where all three of them come together is combined authority and power. If we ever get that together in a community, if the community, the people running an organization and the people that are giving the authority to the organization come together, we'll make good decisions. Let's take the next slide, please. This is a very shortened slide on the conduct of the meetings. But wait, maybe I oh I missed one. Let's back up. This slide is important. I'm sorry, go to go to the second slide. I flipped two slides in there. This is out of the bylaws. I'm gonna ask Ann to make sure that each of you get a copy of the bylaws. Please read them. They're very important. I can tell you by watching this, the board spent a lot of time doing this, so we need to be attuned to it. This is the most important section in my mind. If I remember, it's section two, article one. And in there, you will see this is really what our charge is. And I've been very careful to make sure, and so has the vice chair, that we do not in any way deviate from that. And we haven't, and we won't. It's, it's, a, it's, it's pretty well written. Now let's talk about the meetings. Um, we're going we're gonna to start on time, and I know people get held up, things happen, you don't, don't be offended if we start on time. If I'm not here, Eloisa's here, she'll start it, okay? Or if we're both gone, somebody step up and start the meeting. It's not that hard a deal, okay? But we'll start on time and we'll end on time. Uh, and if we're not finished, we'll take it up the next time. But, but 
Where did I not get the meetings on this? This, please give me the slide that's got the conduct of the meetings. There we go. Now, we will get agendas. Those will be discussed at length with the board and management. We'll live stream everything. That's the archive. Uh, we've been very successful at that with some other committees. It helps a lot. People can go back and look at it. If you don't, you're not able to attend, come back and look at it. They'll all be live streamed. The members have got to be courteous. I have no problem. After listening to these introductions and to the folks here today, we have one fantastic group. And there's not a disrespectful person in the room or online. So I don't, I don't even really think that one needs to be talked about too much. One thing we will need to do is we'll have to set up a process so that a lot of people will speak, they will stop and think, they will speak again. We will be keeping a, a list of speakers as they go. When you finish, please say, thank you, I'm finished, or that's all folks, or whatever you want to say. The list will be kept and we will go around in an orderly basis. Now, let's talk about the resources that we have available to us, which is on the next slide. We have the CPS Energy staff, very, very, very important. This is going to, as many of you understand and have already said, it's got to be a data-driven process. It's going to require a lot of work and, frankly, uh, more than probably any one of us or any group of us can do. So it will be. And so they will, our, our organization administrative work will all be done by Ann. Right here, hold your hand up if you didn't meet everybody in. She's already been phenomenal. We're off to a great start. The materials will be out and we will have a website which is already up and uh, we can talk about that in a minute. The, there will also be a consultant to this group that CPS has, uh, has gotten for us and it's the Brattle Group. Uh, Eloise and I have already had um, a meeting with them, uh, you know, via WebEx. I think they're going to be very helpful, and, and they will be uh, most of your first experience in the first couple of months of this. They were very, they've got great background, and I don't really think you'll find anybody that can do it any better, or maybe there's somebody else can do it as well, but they're, they're, they're great. Now, let's talk about public engagement. Many of you mentioned that when we were talking that we have to have the public, and, and we all agree on that. We want the public to come. My experience, I'm a little tainted because I had to sit four years, listen to people two or three minutes, buzzer rings, cloud of dust. We want something that we can really engage the customers, I mean the customers, the citizens, the people. So we're going to have a couple of ways we engage them. We're going to engage them in the traditional sort of way where you have, you know, so many minutes to talk at each one of the meetings. That will probably be done at the end because we've got some time sensitive work with the consultants in the beginning, but we will we'll have that. As we get to certain points in our work, we will call a special meeting where we don't do anything but, but, but listen uh, to people that want to come at more time, you know, five, ten minutes at a time. And at that process, we will look, open it up so that if, if members of the committee actually want to ask somebody a question, they can ask them a question and get a response. Uh, many times I've wanted to ask somebody something that was speaking, but you can't say anything under the old, the old rules. We're, we're going to look at changing that. If it gets too laborious, we won't do it anymore. But right now we're going to try that. Um, now, the website, uh, it, we do need to put uh, your picture <laughs> and a short biography, you know, a couple hundred words, 250 words. I mean, that'll be hard for some of you because <laughs> you got a lot to say and you got a lot of biography. So try to keep it short and, and sweet and then we'll get that done. The, um, all of the materials will be posted, okay, for past meetings. So. If you need to go back and get something, if there's a, a model that we've done or something, it'll be posted. And we'll keep it, we'll, we'll, I'm, I'm pretty sure it's not gonna have any trouble keeping that updated. Now, we've separated this into two phases because we've got people here that have different levels of understanding of utilities, different levels of understanding of rate making, different levels of cost accounting, 
and, and, and different le levels of how you distribute the revenue requirement after you've determined what it is. And, and if you've heard many people around here today making sure that these are done on an equitable basis and they're done on a fair basis is very important. So we're going to spend uh, probably two to three months uh, trying to get up everybody up to speed. Now that's going to be done online so people can l listen. We're proposing uh, to have those in the evenings from 5.30 to 7.30. And as we go around and have discussion here in a minute, there's pushback on this, let me know. But uh, we have a lot of people that are working. We have a lot of people that have families. And uh, we want to try to grab a, a two-hour period. There won't be three-hour meetings. I don't think I can sit through three hours. So we're going to have two-hour meetings and, and get in and get it done. The, and, uh, and that process, that learning process, is being developed now by Brattle. We'll get that out to you as soon as it's fixed. But they wanted to talk to us kind of understand where CPS is going, where, what the idea was behind the rack, and uh, they've, they've asked for a little time to work on that. Now, the educational phase, we need it to be a little bit proactive. We don't want just people sitting there listening. Uh, we, we believe that there's a lot of different methodologies to look at today under rate making. It do, and in fact, if you look at the traditional model, the traditional cost of service model, it's pretty straightforward. It gets a little complicated when you have to figure out who's going to pay the, who's going to pay the different uh, classes of trade but, and customer class. But it's, it's pretty straightforward. There's a lot of folks that want us to look at different methodologies and different ways of looking at rates. So we'll be doing that. And in the process, we won't just look at one methodology. We've got to be able to tell our community that we've looked at a range of methodologies and these are the differences of those methodologies so that they'll understand. It's one thing for someone to come up here and say, I want time of day pricing when they don't quite understand how, what that means or what that's going to mean to the rate that they're paying. Okay, So we're going to have to get ourselves up to speed. We're going to have to develop the methodologies that we can kind of look at. Now, that doesn't mean that everybody in here is going to agree with a methodology. But we will have a methodology that at least everybody will agree with, if that makes any sense, OK? So we'll know how we're thinking. I've been in these before. And if you don't get your thinking straight of how you're going to look at the problem, and you just sit and have some type of what I call ideological or political cage match, and then you get down to figuring out the rates, you never get agreement. You never can even get understanding. And while we might not get agreement, we clearly need to get understanding. And that was analysis phase, and I didn't even need to use the slide. So I'm going to spare you that one. Now, again, please read the, uh, the uh, addendum on processes, of how we're going to run the meetings. Uh, and if you will, when we're going, we're going to quickly go back around. And what we're proposing is that we'll have biweekly meetings on Thursdays from 5.30 to 7.30. And this is during the educational phase. We want to start those around June 10th and try to finish them in August. Okay? So that's, that's the period that we're going to get Brattle. It's going to bring us up to speed. We're going to be able to, to look at some methodologies that they're going to bring forward. They've helped several racks, all, some in Canada, some here. And, and so I think they've got a pretty good head start on that. And then we will move into the analytics phase. Let's talk about the analytics phase. We are reactive to an extent because in the beginning, we've got several things that are probably coming down the pike. We've got, uh, there's been a placeholder rate increase proposed at the last board meeting for uh, dealing with the, uh, the uncollected uh, funds uh, during the uh, pandemic where people were not disconnected. We have got, still got an issue on trying to get to the flex step, which is the, 
new flip plan, uh, step plan. We've got uh, a flex bundle. Uh, I'm not sure what other flexes we got, but, but we've got a lot of them coming. Plus, we've got a lot of problems that are coming out of the winter storm that we're going to have to look at and deal with, okay? So there's no lack of work, okay? Again, we're not going to tell them what to do. We're going to try to figure out what we think we would advise be done, and that's a big difference. All right, at that, I want to turn it over to Eloisa and see if she has some comments. You want to come up here? Okay, okay. Uh, Thank I'll you. Do it from here. Thank you. Okay, sure. Um, I did have just a couple of other things that I wanted to mention uh, and had worked on ensuring that we have um, access to this meeting in Spanish and closed captioning. So that is going to be on, um, this is live stream, but it will be on in YouTube um, within a couple of days from what I understand. And um, in YouTube, you're able to um, translate that to multiple languages and it'll also be closed captioned. So I did wanna mention that. I also, um, want to make sure we don't forget about Michael Sanchez and make sure he gets a chance to um, to introduce himself if he's available. And then one other piece I want to mention. Um, in the educational phase and analytic phase, um, uh, Reed did a, uh, the chair did a great job of just kind of identifying a few different uh, pieces that are important for us to understand. Uh, but one of the other pieces is that as we are going through this, um, there, there are going to be questions that arise. And, um, and that may trigger for us uh, the need for more information, the need to know more about a specific uh, topic or, um, or analysis. And so I want to make sure that we all know that, sorry, that we all know that we have the ability to explore that further um, and inquire more so that we are truly understanding the rate structure and our role so that we can make some of these decisions uh, that the chair mentioned we would be making in the analysis phase. Thank you, those are great points. Um, at this time, um, I'd like to start around again. Uh, we have uh, about 30 minutes. Uh, if there's any uh, follow-up that, that folks have. Um, and I guess, is there anything else Alice, you have? Do you have anything else? Reed, do you, I, do you have anything? I do think that Michael's back on, oh, so okay, we can good. let him introduce Absolutely. himself. Absolutely. Absolutely. So, Thank you. Thanks for bringing that up. Thank you. Yep. Adrian, I'll turn it back to you for a minute. Yes, ma'am. Thank you, and um, Mr. Michael, uh, if you can unmute yourself, please, and if you can, uh, share your video. Good afternoon, everybody. Uh, uh, sorry, I've dropped off. Didn't know what happened. Had some technical difficulties there, but uh, there's a vast, vast diverse of talent, talent on this rack. I'm extremely honored and humbled to be part of it. Um, well, let's get right down to these questions. Uh, as, as far as uh, what was my motivation on this? Well, it's been the last uh, last 14, 15 months have been trying time for everybody here in the country. Um, but through it all, I've heard the words "get involved, get involved, uh, make a difference." So I uh, threw my name in the hat for this and decided if I could help out where I may, let me let me so do it. And uh, well, here I am. Um, now the um, that was my motivation uh, to get on here. Um, background and experience, as far as uh, that stuff, I've, I've always been a volunteer, whether in church or in youth sports. Uh, I've always uh, did my part to to volunteer. Um, I grew up in a town about uh, two and a half hours south of here in Victoria. Um, life was life was pretty good back there. Uh, didn't uh, really experience anything about uh, uh, human suffering. Uh, until I was in the military, went to school, uh, graduated, and uh, became a military officer. Now I'm a retired military officer, but during that time, had some command and staff assignments, technical jobs, 
uh, but got to see the world and got to see a lot of what happens uh, when uh, things go go sour with uh, public policy or uh, or uh, with leadership in, in public places or lack of leadership in public places. And uh, that was uh, also part of my motivation to get involved in, and make a difference. The uh, academics, um, uh, mass communications, uh, bachelors, uh, the in journalism, uh, security master, security management masters, um, and all the professional, a lot of professional schools and uh, uh, professional military education at, at every rank. Um, but what I would like to see uh, for the for the uh, Iraq uh, or through it all, but what I would like to see coming out of this is that we have a a fair and agreed upon and a, uh, a rate structure that's easily digested by the public, that the public can understand it. And yes, we're not going to get a lot of agreement, or excuse me, we're not going to get 100% agreement, but hopefully we get lots of agreement, uh, plenty of agreement uh, with the uh, rate structures that, uh, that we do have. Also, personally, uh, what I'd also like to get out of it is uh, I'd like to learn a little bit more um, about power generation, uh, sustainable energy and assured energy. But uh, that is who I am in a, in a nutshell, and that's why I'm here at the RAC and very humbled and honored to, to be part of this group. Um, so thank you. I see my time over. Okay, great. Thank you so much, Mr. Michael. I'd like to turn it back over to uh, Chair Reed and Vice Chair Eloisa. Thank you. Okay. Uh, at this time, uh, I don't think we have anything else up here, and, and so let's um, let's just go around. If if folks uh, want to hold their hand up, uh, we'll recognize you, and uh, then we'll keep a kind of a list of folks that are in the queue if they want to speak. If not, we're out early. Oh yes, go ahead. Go ahead, Dana. Uh, yes, thank you. Um, I would just like to ask if some of the information which I think would be important to understanding a rate structure, the various contracts with various types of energy that CPS sometimes is, has said that they're proprietary. Um, I don't agree with that, but I'd like to know if, if CPS is going to make some of these things available to this committee so we can see, you know, the various mix and the effects that that might have on our opinion about any kind of rate structure. I think that goes to the chairman. <laughs> Sorry. Um, we're going to try to be as helpful as possible. We have information on the different cost structures. We also know that as we're going through this RFP process, we have some pricing and things that we can share. So as we're trying to figure out what you're looking for, we're going to be try, try to be as helpful as possible. I could just add to that that um, off the RFPs that, that we've asked for, we got the well, we've gotten them all, I guess, by last Saturday night. And so they have been very helpful uh, on that. And uh, we have gotten, uh, you know, almost everything we, we needed. And we've been able to work around what, what they couldn't give us. And so I was, um, I was very pleased with that, Dana, if that means anything. Uh, and, and it is important because this uh, winter crisis uh, that we just had um, impacted our whole community and they're absolutely not, uh, uh, no one has a lot of patience so we're trying to get that report out pretty quick and uh, I think you will see when that report comes out you'll see a lot of pricing in there that uh, in the past uh, I don't think it would have been in there. So I want to thank uh, Paula and her whole team for that. Go ahead, if you have some follow-up there. No, I just, I just wanted to thank you for that. I, as, I, as I say, I think it would be very helpful for, for me anyway, as, you know, for looking at financials and how to, how to look at this type, of, but also for the entire committee to understand the various mixes. And, um, and of course, we do have a major problem still un, unresolved with the freeze. And You're, go ahead, I'm sorry. 
So anyway, and yeah, I don't know how we're going to resolve that, but we'll see. Remember, remember to say pass. I don't want to jump oh. in. <laughs> or pass, or I give up. So just to just to turn turn that back around, um, what we are what we are seeing uh, is a long period where CPS has not come for a rate increase. In fact, they did one while I was on the council and then one right after I got off. There's probably only two in the last 11 years. So in between those periods, uh, a lot of folks don't get to see the numbers. And one of the things that I think this committee can do is not only with working with the, with the, with the, with the organization, but working with our community is they will, they will be able to see, see some things on a more regular basis. I ran into this speaking to the city council a couple weeks ago. There's some people on the council that have been there that have never gone through a rate increase. So if you don't go through a rate increase, you don't see the numbers, okay? So this is an opportunity perhaps that this group can get some numbers out without it being this crisis of a rate increase. And hopefully that'll go forward. All right, and next one on my list is, is Norm, I think. And I, if there's any other, I'll put you on. Oh. Oh, I'm sorry, Wayne, I missed you. I uh, I'm, I'm listening about rates and so on, but uh, to me, when I try to make decisions, I need to know what the end goal is. Is there a certain shortfall that's coming up in the year 2030 that we're trying to address? Where are we trying to go with the rate increase uh, rather than just doing it to be doing it? We need to know yeah. what, what goal are we trying to get to? If we leave it the same, we're going to be broke at 2030. Or if we do a one cent, it'll take us to 2050. You know, so I would like to know something in that area if that's possible. Finish. That, that's that's a great question. That's some flexibility that we have in our work that you typically might not have when you come for a rate increase. Rate increases are heavily weighted to historical cost. Clearly, they have to look at some future stuff when they're asking for bond approval. But I think we'll be able to look down the line and project out things on different ways that'll help exactly to your point. Because again, we're trying to get understanding, not necessarily get a rate increase passed by the city council. We need to understand, and you're, you're exactly right, Wayne, that's it. I had Norm next, if there's anybody else. Oh. Uh. Reed, as, as, as you and Eloisa were going through the uh, presentation on process, uh, I was reminded of one of my favorite uh, Albert Einstein quotes attributed to Albert Einstein. Um, and when asked one time if he had a particularly complex, difficult, and critical problem to resolve, and he only had one hour to solve it, how would he go about it? And his answer is, purportedly was, he would spend 55 minutes understanding the problem and five minutes working on the solution. And I think that's what we've, we're looking at. Understanding the issues and understanding the numbers and trying to get a, a, a level of competency to where once we think we have the, the fullest understanding of the issues, then we can start to address how we, how we resolve the uh, solution at the end of the problem. Just a thought. Very well said, thank you. I'm sorry, I don't know her name. Um, I, I'm Leslie Province, I didn't introduce myself. I'm the proposed uh, member for, for District 3. Um, and I was well, wondering well, time if, out. Introduce yourself. Oh, okay. <laughs> I'm sorry. I, I didn't know. I was, uh, I was way behind. And no, that's all right. I wasn't up, on the list. Um, well, that's my fault. The, Go ahead. the person who had been approved had to drop out. And so last week I was asked to step in. So okay. my application is somewhere in the works. Okay. Um, well, thank you. So um, do you want me to go through the whole thing? Well, please. I mean, okay. if you don't mind, uh, no, we I got don't. a few minutes um, and we didn't mean to ignore you. That's all right. Um, she, her. And, um, my, uh, look at the questions. What motivated me is that uh, my, 
council member asked me to um, consider applying for this, and I was very honored to be thought of. I'm, I'm in District 3, as I said, and I've worked with Councilwoman Villagran on uh, the Healthy Corner Stores initiative that she, she and her staff put so much time and focus on. Uh, I'm a co-founder of the Food Policy Council of San Antonio, um, and that's how we came to, to be better acquainted than just living in her district. Um, my experience is, um, my most recent career was as a data analyst at USAA. I started my career in petroleum geology. Um, in between, I did whatever I could to stay employed. <laughs> um, I've worked on the SA Tomorrow Plan and the Climate Action and Adaptation Plan um, on those committees. And um, I, I uh, got a Master of Public Administration. I noticed we have several MPAs in the room um, in 2007 from UTSA. I live in a low-income neighborhood. Um, some of us are there by choice, and most are there by necessity. Uh, I have many neighbors who have long history in justice, justice work, especially with refugees and immigrants. And um, so I'm, I'm aware of the, the needs to keep things affordable for everybody. Um, what I hope to accomplish is learning more about power generation and rate structures and uh, coming up with fair solutions for rate payers. I had my hand up because um, I don't know if anybody else has a conflict on Thursday nights, but I do. So if I'm the only one, then I should tell the councilwoman to find somebody else after all that. <laughs> well, no, not after all that. Thank you for all that. That's fine. And we'll take that under advisement and we'll look at it. Anybody else that would like to speak? And then we're going to go to Fermi. He's in Nigeria, so we've got to hook him up. Oh, let's do Jack and then we'll go to Fermi. We're, we're, we are, yes, all meetings in, in, during the education are virtual. That's fine. That's that's not fine. As long as you, I'm, I'm sure you've got internet down there. We need to get it out in the country. I don't have it too well in my place. Reed had mentioned about reading the bylaws, and I think we left it in the bylaws. I think the only sticking point for me, I will tell you this: anything that has to do with the vote, oh, this was a sticky point for me. I have no idea. One one time. Get on. Okay. Well, one of the sticky points for me having served in a lot of different boards is what I don't want, especially when there's a voting issue, for you to call in and hang up. So there is a requirement, especially when we're going to vote, that you must participate through the duration of the meeting. So I just wanted to stress that because, again, your role is very important and there's the flexibility of offline, well, in person and online to participate. So I just wanted to stress that. So it, did that answer? Okay, let's, let's go to Fermi if, if, we can, if we can catch him. Somebody better than me is gonna have to figure that out. Can you, can you hear me now? Yes, Dr. Fermi. Okay, um, I'm going with just my, my audio, just to avoid any bandwidth issues. Uh, I wanted to just point a couple of things that, you know, we, we've all talked about, I saw it in the, in the bylaws as well, and I thought I should sort of mention it up front and perhaps remain silent about it if it's not relevant subsequently. Um, I think, in my mind, what we're seeking is really, n I used to say not a solution, in, in, the, in the ideal sense, but an outcome, outcome that we all can live with. And uh, that's something that's really kept recurring to me as I was reading the bylaws and, of course, looking through all of the, uh, the, the build-up you know, to, the, to the rack. 
Uh, there are going to be many diverse issues, and the question is, well, we might have an ideal solution. It may not be one that we all can live with. And so I'm more particular about what we all can live with. And that's directly from the bylaws. And uh, as Reed had read out earlier, uh, the, the, the keywords are a proposed rate increase, uh, rate structure, rate design, and generation planning, words that are used specifically in the section of the bylaw. Um, I just want to sort of, again, make it clear to, to uh, my fellow committee members that I'll be looking at this on three, on, on three levels, really, three time scales. The very short term is that of what we're doing with the proposed rate increase. As Reed said, this is something that we haven't done in a while, but it's something that utilities do almost every year. We just don't see the numbers. So it's, it's really a short term practice to look at rates and consider whether they should be increased or not. Uh, and, and then somewhere in the medium term, on the order of about five or so years, there's a rate structure and a rate design, which is something we may find ourselves doing um, maybe every other year. I don't know what the schedule would look like, but that structure is something that we don't expect to see change from year to year. But in, in some medium term, it will be adjusted as we experience uh, the, the implementation of those rate structures and designs. And then, of course, on the longer term, you know, 15 plus years and all, is the generation planning. If that involves infrastructure or plants uh, retirement or building plants, these are things that obviously CPS already considers on the, on the order of about 20, 25 years. So again, just to set you all, at least give you your way, I'm thinking the, the sort of time scales at which I'm applying my thoughts to, to our mission, it's in, the, in that manner, the short, medium, and long term. Thank you. Thank you, Fermi. Okay, I don't see anyone else. Eloisa, please finish up. I'll let her close. <laughs> <clears throat> Thank you, Reed. Um, the one comment I wanted to add um, around the education phase is really understanding how the rates impact different individuals in our community, you know, businesses. Um, uh, community members that have limited or um, restricted uh, income or no income, but really understand the, the, the way the rates impact those individuals and those businesses so that when we are thinking about uh, different decisions, we're understanding the burden uh, of our choices on other individuals' lives and businesses um, and their future and their families. And so I want to just uh, also uh, just have that stated just so that it is clear, um, not just to all of us here that I think it goes without saying, but to a lot of the community members that are watching that, you know, um, we are not just viewing this in a bubble, but that we really want to understand the impact of the choices and the recommendations that we make on individuals' uh, lives and businesses in, the, in this community. And so... Do you really want me to close? Okay. Close. Um, thank you. Well, I just want to say thank you to all of you. I'm so excited to work with, with this diverse group. Um, I'm looking forward to hearing from the community and the public about their views about this committee um, and getting some feedback. And I thank you so much, um, uh, Trustee Gonzalez and Paula, for your faith in us in this process, uh, and the mayor, of course. Um, and with that, I will say we are adjourned. Thank you so much. Thank you.